Hey everybody and welcome into Kitchen Table Art School. My name is Brandon Thomas and let's get this class going. Today we're going to be painting a cool little fish and we'll start off with a little bit of light blue. Now first things first with these watercolors, it's always really important to start from very light and then move to very dark. If you do it in the opposite direction, it's pretty tough to control. So first we're going to work in some blues. And I think you'd be absolutely shocked to really see in person how little of these watercolors I use. And you'll notice there are no defining lines at this point. I'm really just taking the blue and covering the paper with it in all of the areas I know will eventually be blue, no matter how light or how dark they are. Just get the lightest possible blue down to cover all your blues, get the lightest possible green down to cover all your greens. Think of this style of watercolor as almost painting like a child would paint, but backwards. A kid would probably grab a brush, take a dark color and start outlining whatever it is that they were drawing, a tree, a human, their house and then they would fill the color in later. What we want to do is put the color in first and put the lines on later. That way we have more control later on and it also adds a cool little style to it. Most important thing is just to be bold, be brave, be yourself. Don't be scared, don't be worried. You can always recover from any brush stroke that we put on the paper. You can recover from anything. Or we just start over and don't tell anybody. That's what I always do. Okay, now our fish can't be totally blue, unfortunately, or it'll look like a fake fish. So let's switch it over to our green. And that's about all the paint that I need. Just tap the top. And we'll make his belly green since the blue's on top. We gotta balance him out somehow. So see, whenever you put in a little bit too much color, like for me right now, the blue is so pretty and gradual and light up at the top. The green right now is so bold. I don't want it to be a green fish, I want it to be a blue fish, so I'm just gonna go grab some water and pull up from the bottom. Pull all that rich color out into the body, and then bam, all done. You can recover from anything. A lot of times it looks most natural to have the bottom of anything that I'm painting be a little bit darker. I'm sure there's a reason, and I'm sure I would have learned it in art school, but I went to art school at my kitchen table, so I don't know the reason. I'm guessing because it maybe anchors it, maybe looks like a little bit of a shadow, sort of grounds whatever the subject is. I'm pretty much making stuff up. You can make stuff up too. Sounded like a good guess, didn't it? In my family, my mom's actually the trained artist. She's a graphic designer at Georgia. Worked here in Atlanta her whole career. She and I actually share a lot of similarities. Both grew up in the same house. Both went to the same high school. Both went to the University of Georgia. And then both started working at Coca-Cola right when we got out of, well, soon after we got out of school. Mom was there for 28 years, and I'm on my sixth right now at Coke. Hopefully I could make it 28. That'd be pretty cool. And the important part for me at this point is we're only halfway through this painting, so to commit yourself to any real hard lines is pretty dangerous at this point, because all we've really done is sort of thrown out a little bit of color all over the paper. So the sooner that we put in those bold lines there's no return from, like your blacks, your dark blues, your dark greens, whew, those are risky times, that's risky business. So I always like to start as slow as I can with as light a color as I can. And just put in the lines first. You'd be swimming around, bobbing around, no control. You don't want that, you gotta give me some fins down here as well. So I'll grab a little bit more paint and make this, this fin in the back, this anal fin, a little bit bolder. And keep in mind, I'm painting this, you know, I'm painting the detailed part of this mostly from memory. 
So it's not any particular fish that lives out there in the world. Never forget that. Whenever you're painting a tree or your house or your cat or your dog, you know, whenever it's something real, you always criticize yourself so much because you know all the details. But if you don't know the details, you don't really miss those details. So take a lot of pressure off of yourself. Don't worry so much if there's one little line out of place. In this case, if there's one little fin out of place. Nobody knows the difference. As long as you keep it nice, composed, clean looking, controlled looking, no one's gonna notice those small details. And you'll be happier with it too. Okay, now at this point, we have our basic colors down. We have some blues, we have some greens. You can start to see the full composition come together. At this point, I generally like to put in a little bit of dimension. So if it's a round object, it's at this point that I usually like to make it feel a little rounder. If it's a sharp object, if it has rigid edges, this is the point where I start to put some of the structure into the painting, not yet committing to those really bold lines, but we are gonna commit a little bit to the shape. And for fish, it's pretty easy. We can imagine that's sort of a rounded shape. If I pick something darker, then I'm committed to these shapes. And I'm just gonna put little round marks right now through the back and take some more green and do the same thing on the bottom. Not too important, just putting the shape in. Um, it, it almost makes it look like I didn't care so much, which I don't, but it kind of makes it look like I don't care so much exactly where those brush strokes went in. It makes it look more natural. Bada boom, we have our base color, we have our base structure. Let's make the belly down here something bright and bold because I know that a bluegill's belly is sort of an orangey red color. So let's not choose that because then it will look like a bluegill. Let's choose maybe a pink. I love pink and I don't really hide that, although I probably should a little bit. But hey, I love pink. It's a great color. I love flamingos. I love the beach. I love pink starbursts. I love pink everything. Okay, so since pink is a, is a lighter color, we can be a little bit more aggressive about how much we pull away out of the paint and into the water, whereas before we might have taken just like a little tiny dab with the pink. Since it's brighter, we can take a little bit more, but we're still not grabbing globs at all. We're just barely nicking the corner and mixing it in with the water until we get a nice loose consistency and a nice bright color. And then we're gonna bring it, there we go. Nice amount. In the spirit of starting lightest, working to darkest, when you're adding these lines in to start really adding some of the definition and the detail, definitely starting lightest, as in thinnest, working to darkest, as in boldest, is the way to go. You put one brush stroke in that's too bold, looks really blocky. I know I said we can recover from anything, but I was kind of lying. Some things you cannot recover from and you will mess it up. So always just be very gentle. Most things we can recover from though. Now I feel like it's getting a little too pink, so we're actually gonna go back to the blue, grab a little bit of the blue and darken this up a little bit. Same blue, same little bit of paint we used. Now it's time for bravery. As Bob Ross said, these are your, uh, what does he say? These are the tests of bravery. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. We'll take some of the charcoal. One dab will do. And we're just 
just going to add definition at this point. I know in general where everything goes, where these gills go, where the eye is, where the mouth is. But in terms of the actual shape, I'm just making it up. So if you need to look at a picture on your phone of what a fish's mouth looks like, just Google one. Lots of options. And yes, somebody in the world is gonna know that you're not painting an actual fish. Or they're gonna go, hey, that's a salmon's nose. Who cares? If it looks pretty, it looks pretty. Oh, oh, Nelly. That was a mistake. I'm getting nervous on camera here. All right, remember the trick I showed you? Dry brush. I'm gonna soak some of it out. See that? All right, Brandon made a mess. Let's see if we can fix it. I guess this fin is gonna be mostly black now. I'm gonna get an all clean, but very wet brush so I can try to dilute some of this black color and save this fin back here. Just need to make it look purposeful. Now that this fin right here is so dark and so heavy, it just means we're gonna have to go through and match it. Everything's gonna have to be a little heavier. it back here, make this fin darker, make the base of the tail a little darker, just matching the mistake. have charcoal wet and on our little board we're gonna run with this I actually didn't plan on having this be a very dark piece in fact we were talking about making making it blue so making it look tropical but now we don't really have the option so I'm gonna make a little puddle of charcoal here dip a paintbrush and add a couple of accent dots I wish that I could tell you a secret to this just like the other, just like the other piece I was telling you about, this is unfortunately all touch, all feel, and all just an understanding of what looks what looks balanced. Just kind of have to have an eye for it. Good news is, no one's mandating that they go anywhere, so. Kind of have fun with it. Let's put one right behind the gill. If you're wondering to yourself, doesn't that terrify you to bring just a dripping drop over your painting? Yes, every time. Absolutely terrifying. I'm always afraid it's going to drip right in the place I don't want it. This one's called Deep Indigo. It's a darker blue. I like this blue. As you practice your touch for the brush, as you practice your touch for the brush and the bristle, <laughs> as you practice your touch for the brushes and bristle, Oh my God. As you practice your touch 
for the brushes and bristles. Becomes a little bit better, a little more natural. Dry the brush off. I'm just gonna remove a little bit of these harsh charcoal dots down at the bottom of the page. have to have that creativity to see that it's going to be okay and not give up on it so soon. As soon as we're ready, we're going to start putting a little character into this thing. And for whatever reason, these little dash marks have become my signature on all of my dog paintings, on all of my commissions like these little abbreviated brush strokes. Balance everything out. Still looking just a little bit dreary, so I'm gonna add yellow, but just a little bit, just a pinch, just to make things pop. Just a little bit though. starting to everything's already starting to tighten up we could keep tinkering with this thing all day and you would eventually hit a point where you added that one too many brush strokes and you'd want to take it and rip it in half and then rip yourself in half. You'd be so frustrated. So I think one of the best skills that I've been able to learn is just when to stop. And I'm getting close to that point because I'm starting to really like this thing. So I'm gonna add in my last few brushes and then be happy with this one. I am happy with this one. Put our last few dots in here, just to accent it. Okay, and we are gonna call that one done. Thanks so much for stopping in at Kitchen Table Art School. Be bold, be brave, and we'll see you next time.